When this guy is on the field, Ben Roethlisberger, they were up 21-10 second half. This is Ben gunning to Adam Zabrowski, and he is off and gone for a big gainer before the Zips finally bring him down. It would lead to this, not exactly what Terry Hebner wanted, third and goal. Roethlisberger going to Michael Larkin in the corner, but the Zips coming up with a big play. Knockdown incomplete. Miami has to settle for a Jared Persesian field goal attempt. Persesian picks up the 19-yarder. Miami out in front 24-10. Akron was after the Hawks, this time putting some heat on Roethlisberger. They flush him, and Brian White finally tracks him down for the sack, and Zippy likes it, feeling zippy. That leads to a 36-yard field goal attempt by Akron's Jason Swagger, and he, we got a game now. Miami's lead 24-20. On the next Akron possession, Miami gets the play of the game. Jeff Fry looking around, got a receiver near the end zone, but John Busing makes the pick. Miami ball on the Red Hawk one yard line. Roethlisberger starts to drive on his own one and ends it right here, keeping it one of his two touchdowns, six yards, rushing today. Miami goes up 31-20. Hawks get another big play from the D, this time turn to Nanda. He's the man, stifles another Akron drive. Oh yeah, watch him work and Miami would keep it coming. Here we go on the ground. Roethlisberger with a handoff to Mike Smith. Cuts it back for the six-yard TD. Miami goes on to whack Akron, 45-20. First conference game, Coach, you come off and you were just, you're fired up over this one. You know, it was a, a pretty gutsy performance by our team. The yards didn't match the points early for our offense, and we gave them some big plays. I didn't think their yards should have matched their points. We blew some coverages. A uh, huge big play in the game was John Beesing's interception. Uh, the other guys got pressure, and then the offense took it 99. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a coach, those are the kind of things that, that make you feel good. Uh, we, our backs were against the wall, and to see our guys, the way they played in those situations, uh, that's something we can build on around here. Was this pretty much what you expected in the conference open? Absolutely. We didn't. Uh, we knew Akron how tough they are, uh, number two offense in the country. Uh, you know, we knew how good their defense was, and we know that they have, you know, a hate towards us. And you know, this is the MAC, and it's kind of the start of the season. And uh, so it was important for us to come out and, and execute on offense and defense. And you know, I think we did a fairly good job of that today. But most importantly, we came out the win. Once more, Roethlisberger opened it up, throwing for 369 yards and two TDs, connecting on 31 of 47 passes, and once more. Big Ben's game was complemented by Miami's running attack. There's so much focus on you and what you bring to the offensive attack, but your running game complements what you do so much, and it's, it's overlooked, Mark. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I couldn't say enough about, uh, you know, Cal Murray, Mike Smith, Adam Sibirowski, those guys that are, you know, filling in for the injured Luke Clemens. And, you know, the offensive line, that, that really does open up the, the passing game because uh, when you have such a dominant running game and a threat as a running game, then it makes it a lot easier on myself and the receivers to pass the ball. When you have offensive linemen that are very athletic and very active, it just makes the, uh, the run game more successful. And then when you have a quarterback, who everyone focuses in on the quarterback mm -hmm. and uh, you know it takes kind of away from the, the running game so then we just come out and say you know what they, they don't think we can run the ball so we're going to prove it to them. In this case by amassing 184 yards and four TDs on the ground. That said, Hector gave much of the credit for this one to his defense. I really thought our defense did a great job, mm -hmm. except for a couple breakdowns, which has been kind of characteristic of us. You know, we've given up too many big plays, right. uh, and, and we've got to be able to finish, and we've got to be able to, to be more sound on defense. Uh, we had two blown coverages that, that allowed them to score two touchdowns, you know? And other than that, I was really happy. Up next for the Red Hawks, Buffalo kickoff is Saturday in Oxford at 2 o'clock, and we will and plus in attendance tonight here at Nippert Stadium. They saw Cincinnati get off to a great start. The Bearcats went on a 15 play drive the first time they had the football and it ended like this. A 20 yard field goal by freshman Chris Manfredini giving the Cats a 3 0 advantage. Then on Southern Miss's first offensive play, Damian Carter, the true freshman, has his pass picked off by Davin Holly. He breaks away from tackles at the 15 and goes the distance. A 20 yard run back, Cincinnati up. 10-0 about seven minutes into the game. But the Bearcats fumbled at their own three-yard line, and Southern Miss didn't have to do much offensively. Carter throwing the pass to Anthony Harris. The PAT was no good. Cincinnati's lead was 10-6. Early in the second quarter, Cincinnati strikes again. Gino finding a wide open Richard Hall. He goes 39 yards for the touchdown. Richard also rushed for 114 yards in the game. The Cats are up 20-6, but Southern Miss made a comeback. On the ensuing kickoff, 
John Eubank started at his own six, got good blocking up the middle, bounced off a tackle, and then it's off to the races. Kicker Chet Irvin had no chance as Eubanks went 94 yards for the touchdown. Later, Southern Miss kicked a field goal and it was a 20 to 16 Bearcat lead at halftime. Now, a costly moment in the third quarter. Gino Gadouli hit as he throws and he was hurt. He tried to limp to the bench area. He has a sprained ligament in his left knee. He would return late in the game. Southern Miss continued to come back. This 28 yard field goal by Darren McCaleb made it a one point game early in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati had a long drive and it looked like the Cats would add to their lead with about six minutes to go. But Chet Irvin's 44 yard field goal attempt missed wide right and Southern Miss had a chance. The Golden Eagles started at their own 27. They drove down the field and with 110 to go, McCaleb's 26 yard field goal was tipped at the line and still went through. Southern Miss on top for the first time all night with 110 to go. Gino Gadouli came back into the game, tried to rally the Cats, but late his pass was intercepted by Travis Coley and Southern Miss held on for the win. Cincinnati had more than 100 yards of uh, extra total offense in comparison to Southern Miss, but the Golden Eagles pull it off with that comeback and win the game 22 to 20. We're joined by Betsy Ross now, who is uh, talking to the birthday boy, Rick Minter, after the game. Well, as you know, Dan, usually when you talk to Coach Minter, you can catch him right after the game, right on the field. Tonight, it was not that way. He rushed off the field along with his team. They were in the locker room for a good 15 minutes before Coach Minter came out, and he talked about tonight's loss. Uh, Coach, uh, it was a tough loss uh, after such a strong first half that the Bearcats had. Well, it's the second year in a row we've played a game against Southern a lot, a lot like this, where we kind of dominated the stats, um, got some points. Uh, defensively, I thought our kids played real well for the most part. But uh, we were making errors and crunch time errors and missing on opportunities that you like to say good teams don't make. And that's why we let the game slip away. Of course, in the second half, you had a couple of key injuries, Richard Hall and, of course, to Gino. What can you tell us about those? Well, I don't know the extent of them right now. I know Gino came fighting back and got back out there and at least gave us a chance in the final moments. We just looked for a field goal opportunity to put Chet back out there. Rich, I don't know for sure the extent of it. Uh, we would certainly miss both of those young men, as we did, in their, while they were, uh, of course, absent. But you know, when that happens, and that does happen in sport and it happens in football, other kids got to step up. I thought George gave us a chance in certain areas. I thought uh, De uh, Derek Eddington gave a, a good performance out there. But uh, we're a better team of those other guys also and part of us. Tough loss, Coach. Thank you. Not a good way to celebrate your birthday, that's for right. sure. But the coach did allude to the fact that this was one that the Bearcats really needed, especially in Conference USA, and they let it get away. They sure did. Cincinnati falls to 3-2 and two overall, 1-1 one and one in league play. They're at UAB next week. Stay tuned. Sports Wrap Saturday night continues right after this timeout.